Hi friends, welcome back with yet another very important digital design concept which is finite state machine design. So in this video, we are going to study different kind of finite state machine design techniques used in digital system designs. So let's get started. So basically we are going through the, the below uh, uh, points in this video. So we will see what is an FSM. Then there are two different kind of FSMs which are Moore and Miller FSMs. We will study their block diagram. Then we will go through different kind of FSM design techniques. Then we will go one by one their very log HDL implementation. We are going to synthesize the design and simulate it using Verilog test, test bench. So let's see what is an FSM. So in digital designs, FSM plays a very important role in implementing the correct behavior of a system during different operating modes. For example, suppose you want to connect your mobile phone to one another Bluetooth device. So what you are going to do is you are going to make your mobile phone discoverable and then you are going to connect it to the another Bluetooth device. So what will happen? So what you are going to do is you are going to make your mobile phone discoverable then you are going to then basically you are going through some pairing or authentication process and then finally you are going to connect to the another Bluetooth device. So during this process basically your Bluetooth hardware in your mobile phone is going through different finite state machines. So this is one example, a very good example of finite state machine, how they work. The one another example is suppose you have a chip so when you power up the chip the chip first goes through the boot up process and finally it comes in the user mode so basically the chip will first go through the pur power on reset process and then based on the configurations or inputs it will it might go to test mo test mode or user mode or some another mode which the chip particular chip supports so here also this is also a very good example of how the state machines max a particular system behave in a particular operating mode or go through the different operating modes and behave accordingly. So there are two types of FSM Moore and Mille FSM. So this is this diagram is the Mulle FSM diagram where we have the next state logic, then we have the present state logic and then we have the output logic. So this FSM, how this FSM is working? The FSM is basically takes some inputs and then based on that inputs, it outputs. And during that process, it goes through different states depending on the input or depending on the FSM, the behavior of that FSM. So basically there are three main building blocks in the FSM designs. The next state logic, the present state logic and the output logic. And here if you see the output logic directly depends on the present state. What is the present state of the FSM? The output basically depends on that. Now, this is the block diagram of Mille state machine. So, if you see, it is also very much similar to Moore machine, where we have basically three logics, next state logic, present state logic and output logic. 
but the only difference here is the output logic is now depending on present state as well as the inputs so this is the main difference between mood and milli fsm now the applications or the use of mood or milli fsm depends on what kind of applications you are going to develop what kind of basically digital system you are going to design so now we will see what are the different techniques through which we can implement this fsm so what does that uh, what does that mean is so in fsm we have three logics present state logic next state logic and output logic so how we can implement that logic so there are three ways to implement that logic first is using a single procedural block so now basically the implementation implementation techniques we are talking here are like very low hdl implementation techniques how we basically write at hdl code of a particular fsm so the first technique is using a single procedural block where we code the present state next state and output logic the second technique is use two procedural blocks where one is used to code the present state and the next state logic and another to code the output logic the third one is use three procedural block each for present state next state and output logic so in this video we are going to implement the first technique which is using single procedural block to implement all logic all logic means like basically present state logic next state and output logic so as always we are going to use eda playground to write the stl code and synthesize and simulate it eda playground is a web based applications which basically uses in built open source tools like yosis for synthesis and rivera for simulation so now let's go to the eda playground and we will go through the first technique of fsm design so here here i have written hdl code for the first technique so we will go through this code we will try to understand then we will synthesize and simulate it so we have the input which is clock reset and one input x1 and we have one output signal which is out we have a state variable a state register variable two bit register variable variable which will basically store the one of the state so here we have four para state defined using the parameters which are s1 s2 s3 and s4 so if you see here whenever the reset is asserted the fsm state is s1 state the fsm will be in s1 state and the output of the fsm is going to be 1 else begin whenever the state is s1 whenever the state is s1 the output is always going to be 1 and now depending on the input signal the next state will be either s2 or s3 so if the next state is s2 the fsm will be moving to s2 state and from s2 the next state will be s4 and the output is zero in the s2 state now if from s1 the next state is s3 then the fsm will move to the s3 state in the s3 from s3 state the next state it will move to s4 and the output in s3 state is also going to be zero so when we are in the s4 state the next state will be s1 and the output is 1 so basically these the case conditions the s1 s2 s3 and s4 are the present state and the next state from this present state for example the present state s1 the next state is s2 so this state is basically storing the next state value 
So here if you see we are using only a single procedural always block and here we are have we are coding both present state next state and the output logic so this is the first technique to implement the fsm design now there are few points you need to understand that here if you see the output is a registered output okay so now let's see so so basically what we are saying here is when the state is as one the output is going to be one but since we are coding the output logic as a registered output it will cause one cycle delay that we will analyze in the waveforms the other important point here is this output the fsm output is basically depending only on the present state it is not depending on the input so this fsm is a more fsm okay now let's synthesize this design so to synthesize the designs we will select the yosi synthesis tool and just enable the show diagram after run and just give it so here is the yosi synthesis diagram and if you see here the output is the registered output okay now let's see how this registered output actually behaves in the basically we are going to see the behavior of this registered output in the waveform so this is the yosi synthesis diagram basically you can you can analyze it it's very uh, simple which is basically uh, the uh, hdl design will basically get serialized into flops and the logic gets so here if you see the state the state is the next state the next state is also a sequential logic now let's simulate this design so to simulate this, this designs we are going to select rivera simulation tool and just enable the open epw after run save the design and give it a run so the output if you see in the designs the output is going to be one either in s1 state or s4 state so in starting the state is s1 zero is corresponding to s1 state so when the state is s1 the output is going to be high at this rising clock age the state is going from s1 to s3 and in s3 the in s3 state the output is expected to be zero so if we see here here the output was expected to be zero but it is still high this is still is high because of the registered output the state has transition here so if you see in s1 when the input was zero the state has taken transition to s3 but the output was still one right so when in the next clock cycles when the fsm will execute the s3 logic then it will make the output zero so the state transition has happened here itself but the output is still high that is basically causing one cycle latency so now in s3 state the output will become zero basically in the next clock cycle here now here the state transition is s4 and in s4 again the output is expected to be one so the output is not becoming here as one but it is becoming here in the next clock cycle so basically again causing one cycle latency 
So at this rising edge, the state from S4, the state transition has happened to S1 and in S1 again the output is expected to be 1. So basically here if you see this is the next clock cycle, in the next clock cycle also the output is 1. Now at this stage it is 1. So when it goes to S2 state, 1 is corresponding to S2, when it goes to S2 then the output is expected to be 0. So the output will not become 0 here, it will become 0 in the next clock cycle. So just to remember if the output is a registered output, the output is always delayed by 1 clock cycle. Hope this is very much clear to you. If you have any queries, please write down in the comment section. If you like the video content, please subscribe the channel. Also hit the like button and enable the notification so that you will get notified as soon as I upload the new next concept. Thank you very much.